J.J. Thompson, a British physicist, discovered the first subatomic particle, the electron, in 1897 and then performed Thomas Young's double slit experiment, but this time in a new way. He sent isolated photons, or quantas of light, through the experiment to see what would happen. When the experiment was not observed, the quantum objects functioned as waves, but when observed, they functioned as particles. What implication might the results of this experiment have upon our understanding of consciousness? Let's ask Billy Carson, author and researcher of universal law and quantum physics. I think it's fascinating to think about how when you take a photon, which is the quanta of light, and you're shooting photons through this experiment, they're functioning as a wave. So you have over time, so time passes, and you have a bunch of photons going through this experiment one by one by one, but somehow they are functioning as one across not only space, but also time. So there's this element that it doesn't matter the space, it doesn't matter the time, these photons or these individuated quanta of light are mm-hmm. still functioning in uh, in a divine order. And you mentioned this earlier about this concept of as above, so below, and now you're kind of expanding that into how we function uh, interpersonally and things yeah. like that. Can you go a little bit deeper into the implications that the double slit experiment on this quantum level has on us and uh, the reflection of our reality with each other as people? Yeah. Well, when you really understand what's going on, you begin to realize the ancient Mayan saying is so true. In la kek ala kin. In la kek ala kin means I am another you because you begin to realize that there truly is one mass consciousness that is helping to create this reality. And individually, we are we are like arms of an octopus that's still connected to the main body. The main body is the universal consciousness. And so what's happened is, imagine if every single sentient being on the planet is just one leg of that gigantic consciousness, and we are all collecting data and information. That's what we're here to do but we're still connected. We're still all the same exact entity. We're still the same being. So when I interact with you, I'm talking to myself. When I interact with somebody else, I'm talking to myself. And in La Kek I am another of you. It's when you really understand the depth of that and how um, how our reality is co-created and how we're really part of the same mass consciousness that's here, you then begin to treat people differently because if you truly understand what it means, when you interact with somebody, you're gonna treat them with respect, dignity, love, unconditional love. Uh, you're gonna be forgiving of them. Uh, you're going to understand that you're dealing with another version of your own self. So that old saying, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, very, very true statement. Uh, whoever came up with that statement, uh, which made it into some of the biblical text, very, very wise statement, because why? It is so true. And this goes back, no matter how far back you go in ancient texts, you discover that it's all about the fact that we are literally connected and we're all one consciousness. So dealing with people on an individual basis, it really is a reflection of how where you are consciously. Because if you're dogmatic to somebody, if you're mistreating somebody, if you're torturing somebody consciously or even physically, then it's a it's a it's a real identifier of where you are and your as that aspect of you is and there's a lot more room for growth because in order to become an ascended master in my opinion we must supersede and go rise above all of these different levels and we're all here on a data collection mission we're collecting information and sending it straight back to source and what i mean by that is the brain is encased in darkness the brain doesn't know anything going on out there and the brain sends its friends out all of its senses, hearing, smell, feeling, taste, touch. And the friends go out and gather data information from all the interactions in this third dimension and then transmit that information back to the brain. They can't figure out what it is. The brain sorts it all out and projects a hologram as to what it thinks is going on out there. And we interact with each other through these holographic concepts. Uh, you know, So it's a really interesting thing. And um, the deeper you uh, understand where we are as, as a connected uh, consciousness, the better you'll treat yourself and others.
Thank you for watching. All around us are pieces of the gigantic cosmic puzzle. Let's attune to its frequency. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications on new videos. This is Teresa Yanaris at Divine Frequency. Until next time.